The way DK, we also like import something. We can ignore that. Here we can uh, fit a high dimensional linear regression. That's D is the number of dimensions we have. The weight is pretty simple, all equal to zero, minus zero, one, and plus a noise. We can know how we uh, actually obtain this data. And then, similar to before, we construct linear regression and initialize the weight, uh, attach gradients. Then define the squared L2 norm penalty or regularization. So it actually is given W power to two and the plus and the sum of the elements and divided by two. That's L2 regularization. The training um, is actually pretty similar to before. The only difference here is that the loss function, sorry, is a lo original loss, and then you do net forward and compare the loss between uh, against the y plus lambda times the L2 pen, uh, regularization of W. So this is the only thing we have here. All the others are similar to before. Okay? Then ignore that. The so net first fit number that equal to zero, which means no regularizations here. You can see that similar thing, the blue line is the training error and the dotted line is the validation error. You can see that the training curve decreases, but the validation accuracy actually is, is up. It didn't change too much. The reason is because we, using, we are using 100 dimensions, but we're only using a very small number of examples. So even linear model can overfit this data set uh, uh, a lot. And we can compute the final W2L2 long is to uh, 13. Now let's try if I use weight decay. We use lambda equal to three. You can see that we we'll still have libel over, uh, overfitting here, but it's much better. We actually drop the test error down by, by a lot. But given that we still have only a few examples for this high dimensional data set, the model is still like we are still overfitting the data, but adding a number that actually um, decreased the tr test error a lot. And also we can see that the L2 law of W is, is pretty small compared to the before, compared to before, okay? So if implementing from scratch, what we did, what we did is we just changed the loss function. And if you're gonna use Gruon or use, using any deep learning library, we usually just uh, tell the SGD function that is apply a weight decay, that is, we directly apply to the SGD function. Um, for example, on Gruon you can say that uh, when you get the learning rate, besides the learning rate, you can specify that the weight decay, WD, equal to a particular number. So here we do a little bit of a uh, more complex thing here. We only apply to weights. So uh, we're gonna talk about how actually this API works. Actually, we connect all this weight and apply with, uh, with weight decay, and uh, for bias turns, we didn't apply any weight decay. That is close to what we talk about on the equations. And then, because we are already add weight decay on the optimization method, we don't need to change the loss function here. So in practice, you don't need to do that. You just specify the weight decay. Apply on bias or not doesn't matter too much in most of the cases. Then, Similar thing, using weight decay equal to zero, you see a big gap between test accuracy and training accuracy. And then if you apply weight decay equal to three, you also see the drops, the test accuracy drops. So also the L2 law of W decreases as well. Any questions so far? Good.